Is there a case for over paneling? And what is over paneling? Well, let's start there. Over paneling is when you have more solar panels or power coming from the solar panels than your charge controller is designed to have. Now, you have to be within the voltage requirements of a charge controller. And honestly, you wanna be about 25% less than their maximum voltage, just to make sure that on freezing cold days in the middle of winter, you don't run the voltage too high and destroy the charge controller. You don't wanna let the smoke out, but you can add more wattage or more panels in that case than the charge controller is designed for. For example, let's say you have a charge controller that's only a thousand watts. You could put 1250 watts on it and I'll cover why that is and when you should use it and when I don't recommend doing it. So first of all, there are two cases that I wanna talk about today. The first is power stations and the second is do-it-yourself solar setups. Now let's talk power stations. For a power station, you're always limited to the charge controller that's built into the power station. So if you have a power station that can take 500 or 1000 watts, that's it. That's all it's going to utilize. So why would you want to over panel that? Well, let me explain. If, for example, it's cloudy out or there's shade or there's other things like that that are interfering with maximum solar production, maybe you're only going to get about 80% of your panels that you've got. And if you've got a thousand watts of solar panels going into a charge controller that can take that thousand watts, but you're only getting 80%, well then you're only going to get 800 watts. So if you were to add more to that, say all the way up to 1250 watts, well guess what? At 80%, that's a thousand watts and that power station is going to use that thousand watts. By adding more solar to that power station, when it's shady, when the panels are not directly aimed at the sun and it's crystal clear out, you can absolutely get more power production out of that larger array than the power station is designed to have. So for example, if you have a power station that can take a thousand watts and the company sells 400 watt portable solar panels and you need to use portable panels, maybe you're in an apartment or you're using it for a camper or overlanding, something like that, then buying three of those, which takes you up to 1200 watts, that 1200 watts is going to get you that 1000 watt maximum more often than not. And that's really the key. And obviously if everything is perfectly aligned to the sun and you've got 1200 watts of panels and they can produce that 1200 watts, well your 1000 watt charge controller on your power station is only gonna use 1000 watts. So you're gonna lose that 200. However, for a lot of people, that's actually rare. It's rare that they're gonna get that maximum production. So over paneling a power station makes a lot of sense to me. Hey folks, I wanna jump in real quick and interrupt your regularly scheduled video and talk about something that you might be looking at for Christmas. And I've got one here that you may be interested in. And it is the Venix V11 Air drone. I got this drone to play with to see if maybe this would work really well for me. And the first thing that I noticed about the Venix V11 Air is that it is super easy to fly. Something I always was challenged with when I first started playing with drones was you had to take the drone out and you had to get it powered up and turned on and then you had to do this thing where you like turn it like this until it beeps at you and then you take it like this and you turn it like this until you, it beeps at you and then you can fly it when of course it picks up all the satellites. And the other problem I had with them was I couldn't just land them. I had to like tell it to land, I had to bring it into a certain spot to tell it to land. And I'm no drone expert, I'm not one of those guys that catches a drone out of the air and all that kind of stuff. I just found that if I can land it near me somewhere that works really well. And sure, they have a home feature that you can just click and it'll come back to home and land. But I found that it was always easier and frankly a little more reliable for me to just bring the drone in where I wanted and then just go down until it goes to the ground because when it gets close to the ground it senses it and then it just lands itself. Super easy to take off, all I had to do was fire it up, wait for it to pick up the satellites, fire up the engines, tell it to take off and then away you go and fly it up and take some pictures and get some footage and all that kind of stuff. Now it has a 6K camera and it can film in 4K and 30 frames per second. So. If you're doing video and that kind of stuff, it's really cool for that. And the pictures are really, really clear. I've been very impressed with the pictures. I love being able to get a picture of my cabin at different angles and distances. It's kind of fun to be able to do that. And if you've never seen your property or home from above, well, it's kind of nice to be able to just toss a drone up in the air and 
get some pictures. And if you've got kids or grandkids that are looking at flying a drone, this one's actually pretty inexpensive. Currently on Amazon, I see them at $314.99, I believe it is, and I saw something about a coupon and about $265. So actually really good price. And the only issue that I've had with this drone in the time that I've played with it and tested it and really tried to see if it would be the right drone for me was that it says it has 10,000 foot transmission. I took that to believe that I could fly this 10,000 feet from me before I lost contact with it. Well, I never ever got it to go that far. In fact, I couldn't get it to go 2,000 feet, usually around 17 to 1800 feet it would tell me that it lost communications and if it loses too long then it's going to fly back to home but if i played with it a little bit and kept trying to tell it to, to turn and come closer to me then i was able to recontrol it and get it to fly around again now granted i am in the mountains and there's lots of trees and all kinds of things so i suppose it's possible that the trees are getting in the way Maybe that's the issue, but you may experience that as well. So I think probably on all the drones, you have to take that with a grain of salt. Frankly, I've yet to have one that I could fly more than about a quarter mile to 1,700, 1,800 feet away before it tells me that it lost contact with me. Now, this drone does not have accident avoidance, so you can absolutely fly it into something. But when I got my very first drone, which was also a Phoenix drone, I flew ah. right into a tree. <laughs> I broke a prop had it spinning around on the ground and couldn't figure out how to get it shut off. I finally got it shut off and all I had to do was replace the broken prop and I actually used that drone for quite a long time. So they say it's got about a 70 minute flight time. Of course they give you the usual books and how to use things and they give you extra cables and extra props and all that kind of stuff. So you get everything you need in this kit. So check it out. Now back to your regular schedule program. Now let's talk do-it-yourself solar and why I generally don't recommend overpaneling. You see, when you're building your own solar power system for say an off-grid shop like I am here or a cabin like I have out in the woods, you generally want to build that so that you start with your batteries and you determine how much battery power you need and then you build your solar array and charge controllers, I say plural if needed, for that battery bank. So when you first construct that, if you think that you need a thousand watts, well that's what you should put in, or even more is okay. But let's say you've got a battery bank that you can charge up in four hours with a thousand watts, and that's all you can afford at the time. So you get a thousand watts of solar and a charge controller for that. Well my recommendation isn't to think about over paneling in the future, but to get a bigger charge controller than your solar array. Meaning that if you have a thousand watts of solar, that's what you've decided you need. Get a charge controller that can handle 1500 watts or something like that. Because you never know down the road you may want to add more panels. But let's say you've built your entire system and you find that you're only getting about 80% production out of your solar array on a day-to-day -day basis. Could you then over panel that to get say a thousand watts instead of 800? Well yes you could. However, my recommendation is always to consider a second charge controller instead. And the reason for that is, number one, on peak solar days, you're going to be able to get all the power that your charge controllers can take and your array can provide them. If, on the other hand, you over panel, you're going to be losing power on those peak solar days. And honestly, for me, peak solar is always in the middle of summer and it's when I can use more power. I don't want to clip off extra power if I could use it because I'm trying to run an air conditioner. So I want to be able to get peak power when that sun is nice and perfect and shiny and everything's going well in the world and my panels are directed at, right at it. I want to get all the power I can produce out of my panels and if I need more power then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a second charge controller. In this case I bought myself a Victron charge controller so that when I add 1200 watts of solar to my cabin and I'm actually upgrading a 600 watt array to 1200 watts, all I got to do is change out that charge controller and I'm going to get all the power that I can possibly produce out of that array. And that's why I often say over paneling can be really good in certain scenarios. But when you're doing it yourself, why not just get another charge controller? And here's a great example of why that is. If you've got 1800 watts of solar, and the best production you're getting all winter long is 50% of that, 
then yes, if you added another 1800 watts to a charge controller that can take 1800 watts, you've got 3600 watts of solar panels and at 50% you're going to get that 1800 watts right? Makes sense. 50% of 3,600 is 1,800 watts. However, in the summertime, well, you're not going to get that extra 1,800 watts you could. You're not going to get the 3,600. You're still only going to get 1,800. However, if you added a second charge controller that could also handle 1,800 watts, then at 50%, both charge controllers are going to be able to utilize 900 watts of that, giving you 1,800 total. But at peak solar in the middle of summertime when you're running your air conditioning, you'll get 3,600 because both of those charge controllers can take everything that's being sent to them. And that's why I don't recommend over paneling in an off-grid setup. Now, finally, I wanna talk about all-in-one systems. An all-in-one system usually has a limit on its charge controller. I have one that I'm setting up here in the shop, which is a lead time, that maxes out at 4,400 watts. Now, that's quite a bit, and I could add 4,400 watts to it, but what if I needed more? What if I needed 6,000 watts? Because a lot of the time I'm only getting 75% production. A lot of people will say, well, just over panel because that prevents you from buying another all-in-one system. And I say, why would you buy another all-in-one system? Just get another charge controller, connect that up to your battery bank, the same battery bank that your all-in-one system is connected to and add the extra solar that you need to that second charge controller. So in short, for power stations, yes, I think over paneling is a great option. It'll definitely help you produce a little more power to get your power station charged up in lower light, shaded, cloudy type conditions. But in do-it-yourself systems, I'm actually a proponent of just adding another charge controller so that when you get to peak power, well, you'll get all the power that your panels can produce. So there you have it, folks. That's my take on over paneling. I hope that helps somebody out. I'll throw another video right out here for you to check out. And thanks to all my members. I really appreciate your support. Y'all have a great day. The old jar hit out.